evening and welcome. Tonight, we will be going over the history and geography of Ashanti in Ghana. Now, I don't know why, because normally I pencil in roughly what these areas look like in my atlas. But when I covered Ahafo, which is over here, I didn't. So I, I'm not quite sure why. So I'm not going to do it for Shanti either, but know that it is a very large area of Ghana. That is about like here. And Kumasi, you can see, is right at the heart of it. Kumasi is the second largest city in Ghana after the capital city, Accra. And it is the heart of Ashanti culture. Is the seat, literally the seat, of the Ashanti Kingdom, which I'll talk about in history. I mean, literally the seat. Um, why don't we grab the tablet real quick? Because Kumasi is actually a UNESCO World Heritage Site, as it is where we can find the Ashanti traditional building. The website says, to the northeast of Kumasi, there are the last material remains of the great Ashanti civilization, which reached its high point in the 18th century. Since the dwellings are made of earth, wood, and straw, they are vulnerable to the onslaught of time and weather. Not a lot of pictures here, but there are some important ones. You can see carved into the buildings here that they're repainting are these symbols. These are called Adinkra. The Adinkra symbols are very, very important to the culture because they are words. The Ashanti wrote in hieroglyphs, and these symbols were on everything, on their kente cloth clothing, on their buildings, their weapons, everything they had. Their Dinkra symbols, because they were their language, right? Very, very important to Ashanti culture, see so Dinkra. And of course, beautiful Kente cloth. But, um, surrounding Kumasi is pretty much entirely beautiful, beautiful forest, or maybe more like jungle, I suppose. And there are reserves there, but it's mostly um, basically farmland, but not the farmland like you would expect, right? It's not plowed fields and all of that. It's wild wilderness. It's where the yams grow, where the cacao grows, things like that. Things that you can't necessarily grow in neat farms. They grow in these lush, jungly environments. pretty much Kumasi and the surrounding villages. We do have the big lake here. Lake Ho... Oh, I didn't write down the name and it's too small for me to read. There's a lake. We'll take a look at it on Google. But pretty much everything is centered around Kumasi, so that's what we're going to talk about tonight. So, the Ashanti Kingdom was founded conglomeration of other tribes coming together in about the 1670s and it was officially founded by the Santehini Osei Tutu the first and as the Ashanti Empire at that point gained power they began to conquer and conquer and conquer and conquer until they had conquered pretty much almost the entirety of modern day Ghana extremely powerful warrior tribe. And, of course, they would come head-to-head -head with the British as the British tried to make their way up the area. At first, from what I can tell, it was somewhat amicable. The Ashanti had gold, ivory, and slaves to sell for 
guns and ammunition and one of the reasons that their army was so powerful is because they had firearms. They could conquer all of the tribes using that. But, you know, the, the British being the British, they wanted to assert that they were the ones that were actually running the show, right? They started their settlements along the coast and slowly started to encroach in the area. They aligned with the Fanti tribe, the south here, who were enemies of the Ashanti. So when the Ashanti and Fante went to war in 1806, the British fought on the side of the Fante and they lost. Later when the Fante went to war against the Ga, the Ga were aligned with the Ashanti. This was in 1811 and they were defeated yet again. So the British are like, what is happening over there? Like these warriors do not mess around. So in 1817, the British first set foot in Kumasi and they were blown away because, you know, they must have thought, oh, these people have, you know, stick homes and they run around half naked wearing straw and paint or whatever. No, Kumasi had roads that were named, they had indoor plumbing, they had multi-story homes. The British were like, oh, uh, these people are civilized in our terms, right? And they kind of have a feeling that they were up against something a little bit stronger than they were anticipating. So after um, other battles they had, they eventually drew a treaty with the Ashanti. Like, we're, we're not gonna butt heads, but obviously the British had their fingers crossed behind their backs because that treaty only held up for about 30 years before war was instigated again. I think the war in 1873 was because the Ashanti had captured some German, like a German family, that were holding them hostage. So the British went to go fight the Ashanti. And the British, finally, knowing what they are up against, won over the Ashanti, and they actually burned Kumasi to the ground. Imagine all that was lost, right? But it would become even more elevated, more escalated. In their next war, which in 1896, they banished the Asantehene. If you haven't figured out what that word means, it's their king or emperor, the Asantehene. That was Prempe the first, and they exiled him to the Seychelles, which there are far worse places to be exiled to. But the Ashanti people remained loyal. They kept their traditions and all their customs. The most important, most revered artifact of the Ashanti is the golden stool. The golden stool ascended from the heavens to the Ashantiheni and was the sacred throne of the Ashantiheni. So in 1900, when some British guy that was in charge of the area said, Hey, can I sit on it? They said, No. Like, what? No, absolutely not. And he got very offended. And he reported back, well, they won't let me sit on their golden stool. Not realizing that it's like, 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 Ark of the Covenant level of sacred, right? <laughs> like, the most sacred object that they could possibly imagine. They did not want this random guy sitting. So the British instigated what's now known as the War of the Golden Stool, and the British wanted to take the Golden Stool from them. Now their current king, Prempe I, was in exile, of course. So his mother, Ya Santewa, led the battle against the British, and she hid the Golden Stool in the forest. And after they had lost the battle and they said, hand over that stool, she handed over a fake golden stool. So they kept the real one hidden. She was later exiled to the Seychelles as well. And the British surely patted themselves on the back and thought that, wow, a very successful war. We did it. We got what we wanted. And 
not knowing that they had been bamboozled. Times changed afterwards. In 1926, the royal family was allowed back to Kumasi from the Seychelles. And in 1935, they were allowed self-rule, which is still in existence to this day. Of course, now it's Ghana. It's its own country with its own rules and regulations, but the Ashanti kingdom is still functioning today in Kumasi. And yes, the golden stool is still there in Kumasi. I'm pretty sure you can't go like just a look at it. I think you need to be a very special, important person to get permission from the Ashanti Hene to see it. And of course, obviously, you cannot touch it, right? But um, I I'm pretty sure that you can't just walk into the palace and be like, can I see the golden stool? They'll just be like, get out. Uh, but I could be wrong. Let me know. That's just kind of the impression that I got researching this place. That, um, it's, it's kept very, very safe. So, that is the history of the area here. And I did leave out like a bunch of little details. The Ashanti Empire is very, very fast going to talk a little bit more about them in tomorrow's video, along with the Ga and the, um, and some other tribes in Ghana. But look forward to that tomorrow. Why don't we head over to the tablet and take a look around Ashanti. All right, here is Ashanti region. You can see outlined here. I'm going to zoom out so you can see exactly where we are in the world. You can see it's a very large region here in southern Ghana. And if you're not quite sure where Ghana is located, it is in West Africa. This is the Gulf of Guinea down here, well right here. The West African coast. This area during the British times was known as the Gold Coast. And just like a quick note, because um, it used to be called Gold Coast, they changed it to Ghana. Named after an African kingdom called Ghana, which is located more up here, not at all down here. They named it after the old kingdom because the old kingdom of Ghana was very rich with gold. Modern day Ghana is very rich with gold. So it's a throwback to them. So here you can see the area. Where is that lake? Over here. Um, the people here speak Akan languages, and I'm researching and realizing that Akan, you probably saw on UNESCO that they had spelled Ashanti completely different. Um, I found a lot of Akan words can be spelled one way or another, and I'm not quite sure why. So I'm not 100% on pronunciations, just because things are spelled so differently so many times. But you can see just how forested this area is, right? It's big Kumasi. There's some reserves up here. Of course, they're not popping up. Let's try to zoom in and see if we can make any up here. There's the Arua Forest Reserve. Oh, I haven't seen this one. Kogiai District National Reserve. But the the pictures that I've seen, yeah, like, they're not great. Like, these are, this beautiful church here, or a mosque, maybe? Maybe that's a mosque. It's like, oh yeah, that's a mosque. Sure. Beautiful mosque. Little village. This is not the reserve. <laughs> like, this is beautiful. That, that's what I'm looking for. Uh, a lot of the pictures of the nature reserves here are not of the nature reserves. <laughs> Let me show you this one. Um, like, that's beautiful. That's nice little fencing. And then I think the rest of the photos are just taken by the surveyor. It's very pretty though. It's all pictures of like these, um, like wooden posts. There's a little farm there. It's all little markers. So like, I'm not, I'm not here to show you wood markers. <laughs> Here's a cocoa farm. You know, Ghanaian cocoa farms are very, very, um, controversial topic due to their labor since they use a lot of children 
and use a lot of loopholes to have children work in these plantations, but a lot, a lot, a lot of our chocolate comes from Ghana and Ivory Coast. I think Cadbury's gets their chocolate from Ghana, I want to say. But, um, yeah, as you could see by the little slideshow there, it's not the kind of farm that's all laid out nice and neat, right? They are forest farms, and it's one of the ways they can get away with breaking so many labor laws. Rock Sanctuary, I haven't seen that. Hopefully, oh, but there's no pictures, that's why. How about this waterfall? Nope. Pretty terrible, to be honest. If you're in Ghana watching this, head on over to Ashanti and Kumasi and take some pictures for Google Earth, because we want to see the beautiful country. Now, I read that Kumasi has the largest market in West Africa, and I wasn't quite sure I believed that, because I'm like, Dakar, Lagos, <laughs> like, um, Kotonou, like, surely there's, you know, larger, but then I saw this and went, oh, I'm pretty sure these buildings are also part of the market, like the indoor aspect. But do you see the outdoor stalls here? Do you see this? It just keeps going all along the streets, too. This is the marketplace. It's massive. <laughs> My goodness. And you can see all through here is a little church over there. Well, that's the Asan Prempe. I think it's the name of the school. Yeah, Prempe Assembly Hall. Absolutely massive market area. It just keeps going for so, so long. It's huge. But the only other really important thing that popped out on Google Earth, I'm sure there's many more sites to see, um, but it was Manhia Palace, which is the current um, palace of the Santeheni. And most of it is a museum. And this structure was built by the British. F from what I heard, um, I, I don't quote me on this, I just, I heard a tour guide say this, that the British built this as like an apology to the Ashanti. Like, we're sorry we messed up so bad, we built you a new palace. And now it's a neat museum, but there's no pictures inside. You can speak beautiful about it. It's all outside pictures, which you can see a, a stool there. Can you see it? It's obviously not the stool. But um, you can look at the beautiful grounds here. Handsome lion outside. And I can show you there's some Adinkra symbols throughout here. Let's see a little party's happening there. Come on. There. This little porcupine is the uh, symbol of the Asante Hene. And as you can see, he's sitting on his stool. Looks just like the golden stool, except way smaller and not golden. Right. Yep. So yes, if anyone's in the area, be sure to go and take some photos and upload them to Google because that's pretty much all that I've got Google Earthwise for you guys. Um, yeah, everything else, like you can see lots of schools popping up and churches and mosques and things and it's like as neat as that is, um, that's not what I'm going for. This isn't a tour of schools and religious centers, monasteries. Um, I, I'm looking to show you guys some culture, <laughs> but that's all that I've got for tonight. But thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this style of content, please consider subscribing. Next, we are going to uh, one of the strangest cities in the world. We are heading over to Turkmenistan. If you know, you know. Be sure to subscribe so you don't miss out. I hope that you found this video to be relaxing and 
educational. And I hope that you have a good, good